and fortune. That's the objective, right? According to every magazine I read, you're only a success if you become rich and famous, and preferably before you turn 30. Which is really pretty scary because I'm more than halfway there. From what I can see, it doesn't actually matter what you're famous for, just so long as you're famous. Obviously, though, it does help if you do happen to have some ability. Did you know that Kathy Whitney made her first million by the time she was 14? Like the ice skater? Yeah. Imagine that, being 14 and already a world-famous millionaire. See, I hate people like her. She needs to be locked up and put in prison for setting impossible standards for the rest of us. Would you like to be rich and famous? Look, I wouldn't say no if someone handed it to me on a platter, but it's not something I lose sleep over. That's a very mature outlook, Miss Cometti. <laughs> not really. <laughs> it's just I've got enough to focus on without stressing about all that other stuff. You know, if it happens, it happens. But you still think there's a chance? Hmm. There is always a chance. It's just something I'm not going to worry about. Cassie's words made sense, but I don't know if they worked for everybody. I mean, everywhere you look, magazines, TV, the internet, everyone was trying desperately to become famous. So what was the point? Well, yeah, of course fame's important. If you get famous, then you get money. If you get money, then you're happy. Who says you're happy? Well, it stands to reason, doesn't it? I mean, it's easier to be happy if you've got money than if you don't. So, success equals fame, because fame equals money, and money equals happiness. Ching, exactly. But we've been successful, haven't we? By getting into Solar Blue. That's pretty major. Well, that's not really minor major, really. What does that mean? Well, getting into Solar Blue is just a stepping stone. Then you have to win at the end of the year and get on the pro circuit. Yeah, then once you're on the pro circuit, you have to win and become number one. And then you get fame and you get rich. Hey, and then you're happy. It's a pretty simple equation, really. But hang on, there are four people here who aren't going to win. Does that mean the whole year's been a write-off for them? Pretty much so, yeah. You can't mean that. Well, why not? It's why we're here, isn't it? I mean, if we don't win at the end of the year, it's all been a waste. All the rest is meaningless. Thanks. I'm glad you told me. Oh, Lauren. What did I say? I have no idea, but whatever it was, Lauren seems to have taken it pretty personally. I better go talk to her. Yeah, it might be a good idea. Lauren, what's up? What did I say? You don't know. It'd help if you gave me a clue. If you don't know, Charlie, then you're not as smart as I thought you were. Or you must think I'm really dumb. I don't think that at all. You could have fooled me. Where are you going? For a surf. Do you want me to come with you? If all that matters is winning, then I can cope better on my own. I don't want my year to be a complete write-off, do I? How could such a simple discussion lead to such a huge explosion? What was it about fame and success and money that got everyone going so much? Whatever it was, it had obviously touched a very raw nerve. So why do you want to be rich and famous? It's because that's what everyone wants. Do they? Of course. That's what life's all about, isn't it? Is it? Absolutely. Who doesn't want to be rich, famous and successful? I mean, what's the alternative to be a poor, failed nobody? But what if we don't make it? What if you or I don't win at the end of the year? Is it all over for us? No way. Just means that this door's closed. So all we have to do is walk around and find another door that's open. And what if we don't find another door? I will. How do you know that? I just do, that's all. No, but seriously, how do you know that? Because it's what I imagine. It's what I aim for. It's what I'm determined to achieve. Anything less just isn't an option. Wow. All this time spent living in the same house as Guy, and I had no idea how ambitious he was. On the surface, Guy was the class clown, but underneath, he was homing in on his goals like a heat-seeking missile. If success was the be-all and end-all, then I began to wonder about Beck and Gary. They were much closer to 30 than us, but they hadn't found fame or fortune. At least not yet. According to all the theories, they should be really stressing. So why weren't they? What's gotten into Lauren today? She's surfing like there's no tomorrow. Um, I think she's just letting off some steam. But she should do more of it. Might be just what she needs. Can I give you a hand? Sure, thanks. What prompts this display of generosity, huh? Hey, you don't think I'm just offering because I want something? Come on, Bridget. Nobody pops down to set up the course of the fun of it. No, I actually came down to talk to you because I am curious. Yeah? About what? You hit the big time on the circuit and had the chance to be famous and make lots of money, right? <laughs> sort of, yeah. 
but then your accident killed your chances. Right. So is that it? Is that all that's left for you? Well, that part is the competitive surfing, but I'm not planning on locking myself away in a retirement home just yet. But your big chance of being a successful surfer is gone now, hasn't it? So what's left? A lot, I hope. Like? Well, you know, I might not make it as a surfer, but I really want to make it as a coach. That's my goal now. So you might be rich and famous by the time you're 30. And what's so magical about the number 30, eh? I don't know. It's just the age that everyone seems to think you should make it by. Well, I've still got four years left, so there's still hope for me yet, eh? And if it doesn't happen? I'll still have plenty of reasons for getting up in the morning. So let me get this clear. You don't care about being a success, about being rich and famous. Wrong. I don't care about being rich and famous, but I do care about being a success. Are you going to put these cones out or what? Sure. Gary's answer was interesting. It was sort of what the boys were saying, but sort of not as well. It made me wonder even more about Beck's take on things. Success? Of course I want to be successful. Who doesn't? So, what was that like when you were at Solar Blue and you didn't get in? Was that hard to take? I was devastated. Are you kidding? No. I thought the world had ended. I was so totally focused on winning that when it didn't happen, I thought it was all over for me. Wow. You seem to have gotten over it really well. Well, after three months of lying around feeling sorry for yourself, it does get a bit boring. So I decided to get off my backside and see what else I could do. And here you are, back at Solar Blue. Funny, isn't it? i tell you something, though. Losing was the best thing that ever happened to me. How's that? I'm not cut out to be a pro surfer. I couldn't hack the lifestyle. I would have been completely miserable. So, have you waved goodbye to fame and fortune forever? I hope not. I plan to work hard and be good at what I do, and if fame and fortune come my way, then that's fine. But I can't control that. And there's no point stressing over something you can't control. So let's just take stock here. On one side, we've got Adam, Charlie and Guy who are all pumped in the idea of becoming rich and famous and successful. On the other side, we've got Gary, Beck and Cassie, who just want to do their thing and let fame take care of itself. And then there's Lauren. So where does she sit? Do you mind if I come in? If you want. So, um, what happened this afternoon? One minute we were just playing pool and the next I was public enemy number one. You still don't get it, do you? If I did, I wouldn't be asking. You really hurt me today. That I realise and I'm sorry. But I don't know how. Then I'll spell it out for you. You said if you didn't win, your whole year had been a waste of time. I've been a part of that year, Charlie. I thought I was a big part. Now I find out I don't really matter that much. Oh, come on. I didn't mean it like that. You've completely misunderstood me. I don't think so seemed pretty straightforward to me. Lauren, there's no way that I'd think my time with you was wasted. You know how special you are to me. Not special enough by the sound of it. Oh, that's not true. And if it sounded like that, then I'm really sorry, but that's not what I said. Sometimes what you don't say is more important than what you do say. Lauren, this is mad. You're making things way too complicated. It's not complicated at all. It's simple. Maybe we should just let things settle then and talk about it later. I couldn't believe how fired up everyone got about this subject, which kind of made me feel a bit inadequate, really. I mean, I wanted to do well, but should I want more? And why didn't I know? As it happened, someone was about to step into my life and decide things for me. Bridget! Hi, Beck. What's up? Bridget, this is Larry Priest. Larry represents a number of surfers on the pro circuit. Hi. Nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you, Bridget. Uh, Larry has something he'd like to talk to you about. He has a proposition you might be interested in. A proposition? Well, I'll let Larry explain it all and I'll see you back at the house afterwards. Sure. So, Bridget, shall we take a walk together? Sure, what's all this about? Nothing much. Just about to make you famous, that's all. Famous? One of the guys that manages Grant Fabia. You heard of him? 
Are you kidding? He hasn't. He's number three on the tour or something, isn't he? Number three now, but in a year, he'll be number one. You can bank on it. So what's this got to do with me? Grant's coming back to Australia to do some promotional work for his sponsors. There's a few dinners to attend, music awards show, stuff like that. So... So Grant obviously can't go to these things by himself. And we thought it might be nice to give an aspiring young surfer the chance to go with him. You mean me? Exactly. But why? We checked out all the young girl surfers around and we thought you had the right image we needed. So what do I have to do? Just go to the functions with him. Look nice, smile at the cameras, have a good time. And that's it? It's a great opportunity, Bridget. Your photos will be seen in all the papers and magazines, you'll be seen on TV, it'll be a huge boost to your career. Who knows where it might lead? I don't know, it sounds pretty amazing. Um, I'll have to check with Beck first, though. You've got to be kidding me, that is incredible! Uh what a way to get yourself known. I thought you said fame wasn't important. OK, I didn't say it was important, just that if it happens, it happens. And with you, it's obviously about to happen. Well, it's only a couple of photo appearances. Hey, that doesn't matter. Cassie's right, this will get you known. It'll open up all sorts of sponsorship prospects. Maybe. No, of course it will. There are so many surfers out there trying to get noticed and you've been given a free leg up. It's a fantastic opportunity. I haven't said yes yet. Don't even think about it because you will never get another chance like this. What do you think, Beck? I can't see any harm in it. Might even be fun. But we should also fess up that we have a vested interest in you doing it. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, if Bridget does do it, Larry's sponsors are going to donate $3,000 to Solar Blue for her time. <gasps> Woo! And the news just keeps on getting better. Why would they do that? It's all part of a PR exercise for Grant's image. They want him to be seen encouraging young surfers. That's even more reason to do it. It's win-win all the way. I guess I better get back to them and tell them that I'll do it. Yes. Um, Bridget, if you don't, we will never speak to you again. Never. Ever. 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 Oh, who wants a snag? Yeah. I'll love one, please. Oh, you take it. No, you have it. No, please, you have it first. So, what does all this do to my fame and fortune scoreboard? Well, First of all, Cassie had clearly linked herself up with the boys. Second, it looked like I was now moving over to that side too, which still left Lauren in neutral territory and me still feeling bad about her. Whatever had happened with Lauren, Gary was right about one thing. She was suddenly surfing like there really was no tomorrow. What had changed? Was it all because of one little conversation? got into you, you're attacking those waves like you want to own them. Not them, myself. Pardon? You can't own the waves, but you can own yourself. And since when haven't you owned yourself? Since I started going out with Charlie. Lauren, I didn't mean to cause problems between you and Charlie, and I'm sorry if I did. I was just curious. It's OK. Don't feel bad, it's not your fault. Well, I don't want to interfere in things, but I honestly don't think Charlie meant to upset you. I know. So maybe you're being a bit hard on him, don't you think? Maybe. Or maybe what happened was a wake-up call. How do you mean? Charlie's made it clear what the year's all about for him. And if I think about it, maybe that's what the year should be about for me too. Can't you have both, though? Success and a boyfriend? I used to think you could. At least until yesterday, but now I'm not so sure. Well, don't beat yourselves up about it too much. You're both too nice. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, that's great about the offer you got. Congratulations. Thanks. I don't know what I did to deserve it, but... Who cares? When a chance like that comes around, just grab it with both hands. I'll let him know, Brad. Thank you. Bye. Hi, who are you? Uh, Bridget Sanchez. I'm here to see Mr. Priest. Oh, oh, you're the one that's got the gig with Grant Fabia. How cool is that? Yeah, pretty cool. So lucky. He's he's gorgeous. Oh, that's good to know. Yes, well, every girl I know would kill to be in your place. Oh, I better not gloat then. No, no, no. Gloat as much as you like. I would. Thanks. Um, so is he in? Bridget, how nice to see you. You found us all right? Uh, yeah, no worries. Good, good. OK, um, come into my office. Bridget, meet Sarah. 
Great to meet you, Bridget. Hi, you too. Sarah's our style consultant. She'll be creating the look we'll give you. The look? Yeah, that's right. We have to make sure that you compliment Grant in just the right way. Oh, I'm... I thought that I was chosen because of the look that I already had. Absolutely. We just want to enhance it a bit. Enhance. Naturally, you want to look your best, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Now, if you wouldn't mind just standing over by the wall, I just need to take a couple of shots of your budget. Uh, sure. Great. Thanks. That's excellent. Good. How are we looking? Well... I think we'll just need a bit of padding here and here. Her posture's not too bad. A bit of tucking in there and some flattening. Mm -hmm. Now, sweetie, can I have a look at your hands? Oh, my goodness. You go to the beach a lot, do you? Uh, well, I'm a surfer, so it's hard to surf without going to the beach. Oh, salt water doesn't do much for that hair either, does it? Oh, well, can I have a look at your teeth? What am I, a horse? <laughs> You wouldn't believe it, Bridget, but teeth are one of those things that can really kill you in a photograph. The slightest little defect gets really magnified by the lens. Teeth. Mm, okay. Yeah, not perfect, but I think we'll get away with that. That was excellent, Bridget. Sarah and I will now work out the details of how to style you. Okay, um, so when do I see you next? Day after tomorrow. And Grant shall be here too. He's dying to meet you. Cool. Well, how'd it go? Um, I'll let you know when they decide my look. It'll be brilliant. I would love to have a personal stylist. You must be so excited. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Bye. See ya. OK, let's go, let's go, come on. Nice and fast. After being given the once over by the styling team, it was a relief to get back to something as simple and basic as fitness training. In fact, if becoming famous meant having to deal with people like Larry and Sarah, I started to wonder whether I was really cut out for it. Let's go, let's go, come on. So how did your meeting go? Was it exciting? Um, exciting is exactly the word I'd use to describe it. How would you describe it? Kind of like going to the vet with your cat. Except I was the cat. Doesn't sound very glamorous. It wasn't actually. Well, at least it can only get better. Well, that's my thoughts too. <laughs> All right, guys, hit the showers. Who's cooking dinner? Me and Guy, any objection? It's not one of Guy's stews, is it? Hey, I've got some new ingredients, you'll love it. Is that a promise or a threat? No, they're just sausage bits. <laughs> you waiting for something? Waiting for you, actually. I thought you were still angry with me. I'm over the anger bit. But I'd still like to talk. Sure. Look, I'm sorry for giving you a hard time about what you said. I'm sorry if what I said hurt you. At least we've both got our sorries out of the way. Well, if you're sorry and I'm sorry, does that mean things can go back to normal again? After I calmed down, I started to think about what you said. How the purpose of the year was about winning. And? And you're right. That's why we're all here. We can do that and still be together, though, can't we? I don't think so. Why not? I don't know. Having a boyfriend, it's like I'm always thinking about you. Watching you, waiting to be with you. These last two days, I've realised how little time I've spent this year actually thinking about my surfing. I mean, really focusing on it. Are you, are you saying that you want to break up? I just think we should cool it. At least until the end of the year. The finals are only a month away. I don't want to leave here without giving them my best shot. You want that too, don't you? All I'm saying is, let's put things on hold until then. Is that okay? That's what you want? I do. I think it's the best thing for us. <laughs> sorting out her priorities with Charlie. Sarah was putting me through the world's biggest makeover. As far as she was concerned, I was an ugly duckling who she was going to turn into a swan. Only then would I earn the right to grab my brief shot at fame on the arm of Grant Fabia. Shut my eyes at 
Lionel, I can't believe they're changing you. Thanks. Oh, I would die to be in your shoes. Have you um have you met Grant yet? He's so adorable. No, not yet. Okay, well seriously, you'll love him. He's he's every girl's dream. Well, that's all I can ask for. Bridget, hi. Don't you look fabulous? Come on in. Uh, Larry, I was just wondering, do you have any information on the people we'll be meeting? Why would you want to know that? Oh, just to know what to converse with them about, you know. <laughs> Bridget, all you have to do is look pretty and smile a lot. Leave the talking to Grant. He's the one they want to hear from, right? Bridget, Bridget, don't worry. It's, it's like the perfect gig. You get famous without having to do anything. Right? Exactly. Now, come and meet Grant. He's dying to say hello. Yeah, I'll be back in 14 days. Yeah, look, I've got to go. All right, see ya. Bridget, meet Grant. Grant, Bridget. Nice to meet you, Grant. Guys, she's too tall. No, she's exactly your height. I don't want someone the same height as me. I want someone a bit shorter, and I told you that. Easy. Slip off your shoes, honey. <laughs> we'll have her wear flat shoes. It's not a problem. OK, well, what about the hair? What about it? Have a look at it. It's too blonde, and there's too much of it. We can fix that. We'll just cut it. OK. Well, while you're at it, the dress has got to go, too. Why? The girl is background. She's there to compliment me, not compete with me. I mean, do you people know your job or what? Fix it. If getting a quick ride up the fame and success ladder meant having to put up with all this, then I started to wonder if it was really worth it. And now I'd met Grant. Excuse me. I didn't need to wonder for too long. Excuse me. Thank you for this opportunity, but I've decided to withdraw. Withdraw? Yes. I hope it all goes well for you, Grant. <sighs> Bye. Bridget, wait up. Look, don't worry about Grant. He just gets a bit anxious. He'll be fine. I'm sorry, Larry, but this just isn't me. Do you realise the opportunity this represents? Do you understand what you're throwing away here? Probably not, but I wouldn't have been much good anyway, and you need someone that's really committed to this. What am I going to do? The, the functions start tomorrow. Where am I going to find a girl to replace you? Melanie, how tall are you? Uh, I don't know, probably a little bit shorter than you, I suppose. Do you surf? Yeah, I do, yeah, I surf every weekend. There you go, the answer's right under your nose. Thanks again. Something wrong, Mr Priest? Sarah! Sarah, can you come here, please? Get hold of that hairdresser. Bridget. I mean, if it didn't feel right, then it didn't feel right. That's all there is to it. And you're not angry about the money? Well, we could always use the three grand, but not at the expense of someone's happiness. It got me wondering, though, maybe I'm not ruthless enough. You know, maybe I'm not as competitive as I should be now. No, don't think about it. I think your attitude's fine. You sure? Yeah. I mean, you see those waves out there? The kind of success that you want depends on reading them, catching them and riding them. Getting your picture in the paper as some boy's handbag has got nothing to do with it. Sounds good to me. That's what I like about Beck. She has this knack of making things simple. And the simple truth is, there's success and there's fame. And the two things aren't the same. It was now pretty clear that success was the one to aim for. Mind you, it's a different thing to actually achieve it. But that's another story.